we are at a season and a shift where things have to change. Um, and we're just going to talk about this morning because what we do, we, we definitely know that racism is the spirit of this country. People say, well, you shouldn't say that. Well, let's talk history for a moment. Uh, this country was founded upon slavery. This country was founded upon uh, just the way it was taken from the Indians. And then uh, if you just study your history, we're not going to get all into that this, today. And when the Constitution was written, um, back when it was written, and it said that all men were created equal, that did not apply to African Americans. Mm -hmm. That didn't apply to Hispanics. It applied to those who... Didn't apply to Indians. Did, yes. Didn't apply to minorities in this country. Asians... Did not, did not apply to minorities at mm -hmm. all in this country. It applied to those who were white, who was rich white, poor white, uh, no white, so to say, low white. And people don't like to have these conversations because now we're growing up wondering, well, we've come a long way. Well, let's be honest. It was just in the early, uh, late 60s. That was a great ride in 68, the year I was born. Talking about 60 years. So we're talking roughly 60 years. Uh, and, and really less than that, because I recall as a little boy, uh, down in Winder, standing over by the uh, Bell South Television place, uh, phone company at the time, and the Ku Klux Klan marched in Winder. And I'm standing just... Winder, Georgia. Winder, Georgia. I'm standing literally feet away from hooded men in their capes and hoods. See, this is something that some of our young people only saw on television. I live this. I see this. Right. Uh, I recall in 87, 88 in Farsight County, which is Cummings, Georgia, where there was a great riot where Hosea Williams and others were marching, and then there was a great outbreak, uh, a clash, and when the Klans began to, to, to it was a peaceful protest, but it ended up being something very crazy. Oprah covered it, or Geraldo covered it, it was a lot of coverage. So racism has never gone anywhere. Now people say, why is it that every time something happened to a black person, the first thing that black, black people cry, or what is cried, is racism. You think that's true? You think that, that's what we, we claim? That's our car. You always go to the race car. How many believe that this morning? No, no, no. That's not the first thing. But we have to, we cannot ignore the fact that there's racism, racism in this country, that there are races in this country. On both sides. On both sides. Mm -hmm. And that we have, but we have now, we're living in a, an environment, you guys. Um, I said this to Carrie this morning. You know, we're looking at this current administration as a backlash to the Obama administration, right? And so there's this, this back and forth that's going on. And the Obama administration was trying to usher in more diversity and peace and equality. And then as a backlash, you have um, people who do not want those things, people who never wanted a black man in the White House. So there's a backlash and a push, which is where how we you know we get Trump into office, and he's I'm not even claiming that President Trump is a racist because I don't really believe that he is a racist. I've seen interviews with him that said from 30 years ago, 40 years ago, that if he were to ever run for president, which what how he would run for president because he knows he would be able to get voted into office by going that route and. You literally manipulating these people to put him into office. He's he's smart in order to be able to get what he wants. Now that being said, the 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 fires have been stoked. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, what you're looking at over this last how long has Trump been in? Three years, going on four. This is four years. This is four. So we're now dealing with. Don't give it any more years. You know, we're now dealing <laughs> with. This, this environment that has been stoked and, and racially divided. Our country has never been more racially divided except for slavery, right? We're, we're dealing with a time when people are now openly racist, openly. It used to be you had to be a closet racist if you didn't want to face. That's why they wear the hoods and hide their identity. But now we're dealing with a time where our current culture, current society has made it okay for you to be a racist. And so we're dealing with men and women mm -hmm. that are literally empowered in mm -hmm. their racism. Mm -hmm. We're dealing, so here, here's what I wanna point out about Mr. Floyd's death. You've got a cop being recorded and he knows he's being recorded. This is where the audacity and the boldness comes in. To where it used to be, even just a few years ago, you turn that camera on and the cops, 
and it's changing their behavior, it's changing their words because they're realizing they're being filmed. Now they're getting so bold to where I'm gonna kill a man right here in front of you on camera, on film, and I don't care what you think or what you say or what you do about it. They're that bold. But it's our current society, it's our current culture that is giving that level of boldness to the acts of racism, to the acts of racist. And so we are living in a country that's so divided. So what we're seeing now when we see these riots across the country, we are seeing a response to that. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a, re it's no, because they're not being peaceful about it. They're not being quiet about it. They're not being sneaky about it anymore. They're now openly killing us. They're now openly, you know, doing videos. There's now YouTube channels. There's now all kinds. People feel like, okay, as a racist, I have a right to my opinions, I have a right to my feelings, and I can openly share my thoughts and feelings. Okay, you have a right to do that, but you know what? Minorities have a right to do that as well, and minorities have a right to protect themselves, and minorities have a right to express and demonstrate their feelings and, and their thoughts around this stuff as well. And I think at the end of the day, and this is what I said to Carrie this weekend, I didn't raise my boys to be quiet. I didn't raise my boys to step, step back, let anybody walk all over them, let anybody diminish them. I didn't raise them to play small. I didn't raise them to be quiet. I didn't raise them. I raised them to be strong. I raised them to be smart. I raised them to be vocal. I raised them to stand up for what they believe in. And you guys, what we have to realize is now with the younger generations, we have instilled in them an empowerment, a voice, a, a belief in themselves, a, an empowerment, a strength, a boldness, a courage that maybe previous generations didn't exactly have that same type of freedom to be that independent, to be that honest, to be that real. These younger generations are willing to die for what they believe in. They're willing to die. They're not afraid to die. And that's what I think is harder for older generations to understand is that we have got younger generations that are so bold about what they believe in that you're going to see them standing up. You're gonna see them fighting back because they're tired and they're saying, look, your ways are not working. It's time to try something different. So here's, here's the, the story. And, and back in the 60s, there were vocal and blacks who were willing to die. There were whites who were willing to die with blacks. Uh, what we want to specify this morning, and really we want to look at two different things. One, we want to look at racism, and then two, we want to look at police brutality. Because they both go hand in hand as far as the upcry and the up, uproar today. Um, just about seven miles up the road from where we live at. It was just, I mean, just Friday night, the riots. It was headed to the governor's mansion. It was headed to Lenox. They were doing various things. Um, I believe that in the 60s with the Black Panthers, with the various black races, with the people coming along, they were not afraid to die. They was willing to die for what they believed in. Uh, then we, we came along and they found a better way. The better way was peaceful protest. The better way was becoming more in, uh, intellectual. Voting. Voting. And we're going to talk about that today because part of what we're seeing today is due to the fact of people not getting out to vote in the polls back when that was the election. Now, you may say, well, I didn't like Hillary, I didn't like Trump. Well, guess what? You had to vote for somebody. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, I, can, I can be honest, I didn't even see us being at this state right now when the election happened. I knew that was not going to be good. Uh, but what's bothered me the most, more than racism, is the police brutality. Because what we saw the other night when we saw the video that was hard to watch, when we see uh, the, the guy that was selling cigarettes being choked out, Mike Brown, uh, various things, the system, the judicial system, is not built to protect minorities, okay? It is built not to protect us, and we'll be honest with you, because there's all the technicalities. If you looked at all the uh, unlawful shootings, um, the gentleman that was on Facebook Live that the, the officer said, give me your license, and he goes to reach for it and he gets shot. And the girlfriend says, why did you kill my boyfriend? No jail time. Uh, if we didn't have cell phones today, how many of the ones that have been 
You yeah. know, it's not that it's happening more. This is what Will Smith said. It's not happening more. It's not that it's happening more. It's now just being recorded. Yes. And so we live in an era where these young people watch their great grandfather, their grandfather, and even us as their fathers. I won't say turn the other cheek, but make excuses for not actually doing any actions. And so now, and I put a post up the other day, because I'll be honest with you, I don't like the looting. I don't like the breaking and destroying of the city. Someone posted on my page the mentality that people have that does this, that is a scientific study. Bump that. No, you shouldn't loot. You shouldn't burn down your own city. You shouldn't go in there and grab brown liquor out of McCormick and walk down the street like you've done something right. No, that's, that's ignorance. But you have the people who have done peaceful protests. Now, I'm going to say something. Uh, one of the tricks, and I posted this as well yesterday, we're going to talk about what season we're in. Um, the, 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 the white supremacy knows that they cannot openly do what they used to do. Okay? You can't have the open lynchings. You can't have the, you know, the, what I say go with the Emmett Tillman whistling at a white girl. They're going to beat her down, beat them down and kill them and get away with it. No, that's not happening today. But there's a, no, no, let me finish. There's a smarter way it's being done. It's being done through the laws. It's being done through protection. It's being done through ways that protect them in court. So we'll, we'll appease you by arresting them, but we won't charge them for the full crime that should be because they're a police officer. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're protected. And so if you really be honest, and that's right, killing is in our history. That's part of how America was founded on killing. Right now, today, the frustration is when is enough enough? You got spiritual leaders who are still trying to say trust in God. We got the young people that are saying, but well, where have that gotten us? You know, I told someone this morning, you can't quote scriptures right now at people because they're not hearing it. And most of them say, well, the Bible was written by white men to protect black men, white men, and it wasn't written for blacks. It wasn't written for Hispanics. It wasn't written for Asians. It was written for whites. So we have to really stop and understand the nature. Uh, can I be really transparent? The young people today do something that my generation and the prior generation did not do, and that's study history. They have gotten the they have the internet able to get in and study and see the plight of uh, injustices for hundreds and thousands of years, to the point they're going no, no. When is enough enough? When who? And, it's, and I say this to someone. I says. What would you do if you turn on the television and see your son on the ground with a cop on his neck and he's okay. saying, Daddy, he's saying, Mama, I can't breathe. Are we gonna say changes? Are we gonna say, yeah, 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 are, are we gonna quote scriptures then? Are we gonna say, oh well, uh, you know, all Maybe things your son? Y'all talk to us today because you kind of quiet with us on Facebook, but this is real talk this right. morning. What would you do if it was your son? And see, I have to think about that. I, we have uh, uh, Trayvon Martin's mother is running for office. That, 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 that you she's, go. she's actually yes. created a lot of legislation and is actually spearheading and going into politics in order to make a difference and make a change because she knows that she's got to fight in a different way. Yes. And, and this is one of the things that I'm, I'm saying, you know, we need more and black police officers and white police officers who love everybody and see all lives matter, black lives matter, you've got to begin to turn against these rogue cops. You've got to begin to turn them in because we're dealing with a gang mentality when it comes to police officers. Mm. We're dealing with this, this fraternity, Thank you. this Bring brotherhood it it of cops. They're not all bad, but guess what? One bad apple, one bad one, right? And because of the fraternity, because of the code, the code of conduct, because yes. you're going to stand next to your brother, the cop, yes. to support him and cover for him. Yes. So the the good cops are quiet. Mm. They're not. They're not speaking out. They're not correcting them. They're not turning them in because there's such a strong code inside this fraternity of cops. Mm -hmm. But we have got to begin to change the narrative. There's got to become a backlash against. I, we watched a video from a white cop who was so passionate about saying the, that this was so wrong yes. and that as the other officers stood there, the other officers allowed this man to do this. And now the work that all the other officers have to do across the entire country to try to heal these wounds, to, to, try, to, to trust us, yes. to believe in us, to for all of the good cops, we love you, we appreciate you. We know mm. you're doing the best that you can. 
But you have got to stand up and come against these bad cops, these racist cops who are out here using the badge as a way to kill and destroy black lives. And minority lives. It's not let's just, just, let's just say it's minorities, minor yes. It's yes. all minorities. All minorities. Because it's a fraternity, and it's that mindset that is giving these cops power, and it's also protecting them. Because think about it. You arrest them. You go to court. This, this, is, this is what bothers me. Back in the 90s, when Clinton was in office, correct? Mm -hmm. They came up with three strikes, all right? Three strikes, basically, we know you can't blame that on Reagan. That was Clinton. That's a Democrat. And it was basically written to basically take our black fathers out of the home. I'm going to sum up this. If you want to kill the next generation, you kill it from the male, not the female. That's why a lot of you single mothers have now had to become, uh, not just through divorce or single parenthood, but had to raise basically the mother and the father. Black fathers are so needed in the lives of our boys and when that law was written, three strikes you out, that was to get drugs. That law was written basically for those that knew blacks couldn't afford crack, but they couldn't afford cocaine. That you could get crack and go to jail for more for having more crack, which is less money, than cocaine, which is more money. So it was written against blacks. Uh, it, was uh, written minority. For poor minorities. it was written for poor minorities as a way of getting you off the streets. The 13th Amendment, have you ever seen that on Netflix? Whenever they could not, whenever, you, okay, how can I put it? When laws are written to give you more rights, there are other laws written to take them right them from you. Okay, it's still systematic. It's, so yes, yes, it's, it's still, system still systematic yes. to keep minorities in their place. Yes, keep minorities controlled. And something, uh, Rebecca, somebody said to me the other day, and I had to really help them. They said, "Bump Obama. He didn't do nothing for blacks. What made you think that Obama was going to be the black savior for us?" He was, he was going into an office of a black man who's doing a political situation, but he's not. He still had to be just the very best president for all Americans exactly. that he could be. Say it again, all Americans. All and Americans. so we're, we're in a position right now as a country where there are systematic things in place to keep the oppressed oppressed and the rich rich. We have laws in place that you don't pay your taxes, you go to jail. But we have a president in office who has yet to reveal his taxes from day one and can get away with it. That can actually do things in office blatantly. I he even made a statement. I can go down on 13, uh, 1300. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, whatever that avenue is, and I can kill someone in broad daylight and I can get away with it. It's that mentality of seeing, people, seeing people that are angry, but then you post, and this made me so upset yesterday, and I posted on my page. MAGA loves blacks. Loves the black people. MAGA, MAGA loves the black people. Now, if Make America Great Again is all about unity as a country, then why did you differentiate that MAGA loves black people? It's because it's not black people. Thank you. Make America Great Again means make America white again. Or make white America great again. And I'm not, listen, and we're not racist by the least, but we have great love for all cultures. But we gotta we have talk about and family of every color. Yes, every color. Every color, and we have to talk about because these are things that people don't want to talk about. Well, let's talk about kumbaya and holding hands and quoting scriptures. Not today, guys. We're not going there today because we're in a country that is struggling. When you walk outside, and you, you, I mean, we live in a, a very diverse neighborhood of various cultures, but yet you can feel the tension even in the neighborhood when you see someone. Yeah. You can feel that the Asian is looking at you, even China. <laughs> made a post the other day on Twitter that simply said, I can't breathe. China. Yeah. And one of the <laughs> things that I think is so crucial, you guys, is that we understand black people are not alone in this now. Mm -hmm. Last night in Kentucky, a line of white people stood in front of the black, they, they formed a line in front of the black protesters between the black protesters and the cops. Yes. There's a wonderful picture mm -hmm. we'll that, that shows this, this line of white people standing in front of blacks, protecting them from the police, and the black protesters are behind them. We're not alone in this. Every, people who love everyone, people who, white people are beginning to understand that if I love black people, I can no longer be quiet. I've got to stand up and use my privilege to, to say and speak out and take action. 
Take action. How do you take action? Making a video, making a video, joining a cause, joining, protesting, right? But the calling, biggest change. Calling in yes. to our representatives, calling in to the state's attorney when these atrocities happen, and, and call, calling in, calling the numbers, emailing. Blow them Blow up. Blow them up. And the power of your money. Money. The power of your money. Why are we saying these things? Because guess what? Many of you have yet to even vote in the election that has happened in your city. Local elections. You know, we just think about the, 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 the national election, but your local elections. The senators, the House of Representatives, the people you're putting in office from your community. Do you even know them? Do you even know the person that is running? Well, we go in, ah, I don't know them. You need to know because these are the people that, are, first of all, getting a check from our taxpayer. These are the ones that are making yes. laws that govern the next generation. Yes. Okay? And listen, you talking about I'm, I'm behind Biden. Okay, who's in your local jurisdiction? Who's Do you, making our state laws, yes. our local laws? Yes, because whether, whether you know it or not, just because Corona's here, laws are still being passed every day. And I want you to share this broadcast because we want everybody to understand that there's time for change. But change comes in the power of votes. The very reason, somebody hear me, the very reason they never wanted our, our, our blacks to have a right to vote for any other small nationality is because the power of the minority now becoming the majority. That's right. Okay? And so when, 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 when civil rights was given and voting rights came, guess what happened? There was now intimidation. Let's talk about it. Intimidation leading up to going to the polls. We see it today, intimidations. Right. There's, there's something that... Voting didn't matter. Yes. They wouldn't fight say our that. right to vote yes. so hard yes. if voting yes. didn't matter. Yes. Voting matters. Yes. Your it voice matters. matters. What do you say, Karen Rebecca? What we're saying to you is... If you want to bring change, stop talking about it and let's be about it. Get your, this is where the churches will come. I did a video a few weeks ago talking about what happened to the church. Not many people liked the video because it wasn't religious. What I was saying was the church was the one that was the center point of getting the communities together to go out and vote, to invoke change, to bring change because all other shelters were being shut down. Now we have the power of the, of the internet, social media. So, and, and then people don't want to talk about this. It's time to stop now, and this is going to sound harsh, but you'll be all right. It's time to stop running around the church, sit down somewhere, deal with what's in front of us, come up with an idea with the young people and ourselves, what needs to happen. We understand your feel. We understand our wisdom. Merge the two together. Understand the power of change and of voice. And we need those of us who believe strongly in our country and in equality we need you to run for office. We need more of us yes. to get into office. Yes. Listen, just like Trayvon Martin's mother, you don't have to have a history in politics now. Mm -hmm. Trump has proven that you don't need a history and a long resume in politics mm -hmm. to get involved and bring about change. We need to be encouraging our children our grandchildren to run for office, run for that, that commissioner seat, run for that board, run for that state seat, run for, be, become a mayor of a city. We need to be placing our people mm -hmm. who believe in fair and equal equality mm -hmm. for all people. Mm -hmm. We need you to run for office. Better yet, Rebecca, and I, and I totally agree with you, but let's talk about something that's a major problem that we don't talk about. There needs to be a legislation that limits how many, how long a senator can run in office. Because no change is going to come if you have people like, you know, um, McCormick, what's, what's, uh, the, the, uh, uh, Pelosi and all. Pelosi is going to, the Democrat doesn't mean anything. They should have, just like the president, four at the most eight-year limits. Do you know they can keep running and running and running and no change yeah, comes? Because yeah. if you're really going to bring change, because it's the House and the Senate that helps bring change. The president is just one that can has his party that, support, that, 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 that pushes him. We need to have a limitation on how long a senator can be in the office and the House of Representatives. I think they're two they're years. Here. They're two years, but the senators are not. Right. Every four years there's a vote, but there needs to be limits because you can't bring change if you don't bring change out of the House. Mm -hmm. Federal governor, I mean federal judges, 
They're tenured. They're never leaving office. Once they're, once they're put in office, they're there until they, what, resign or retire. And, and we have to understand that right now, when um, down in the um, Ahmad that was killed by the father and the son Aubrey. for Aubrey, mm -hmm. we have to understand that now with social media, we have a voice like never before. We have a voice. We have power. What? Because of social media. It's given us a platform. Mm -hmm. We now can use our voice to bring about change, bring pressure. Because guess what? Just like these yeah. people are voted in, they can be voted out, and they know that. They Think about how much they bend to public pressure. If they think for one second that their constituents, their voters, are turning on them, and they're not happy with something, that means when we're calling those numbers, when we're calling the district attorney, when we're calling our representatives, and they're getting blasted with phone calls and tags across social media, saying we want change, we demand justice, we demand fair, we demand equal rights, guess what? They are, they are voted in by popular opinion. They pay attention to what's popular. Mm -hmm. They are susceptible to public pressure. Because they want to keep their jobs. <laughs> so this is how we can use our power, is by calling, emailing, tagging them in posts on social media. Mm. We can, if, yes. we, if we come together and we are collectively bombarding these people, right? What do you mean third degree murder for that cop, for Mr. Floyd? Third degree murder? We need to be calling, texting, emailing, tagging on social media. Third degree? Are you kidding me? This is wrong. You know, hold on. You know what? You just brought up a good point. Because here's what's crazy. They said the reason why they gave him third degree is because he didn't intend to kill the gentleman. So that's what manslaughter come in. But yet, a person that's doing a drug deal, he doesn't mean for the drug deal to go bad and kill someone. But then it happens. He got first degree murder. Because there's certain charges that are written to put people away for a long time. They didn't build larger prisons for uh, the Caucasian. No, these larger prisons were built because there were laws put in place to fill them. Who does the work in the prison that supplies America? It's the new slavery. It's come on, somebody. I don't want to talk this morning. Prisons are the new slavery. So was it, there's not a chain gang yet. They're privately financed, privately owned. Yes. They're private corporations yes. that are actually benefiting from all everybody that's in jail and they're working and creating products that go for sale on the open market, in the marketplace. So you've got a free labor force, just like you did in slavery. All you have to do is house them and feed them, and they're working for free. So what does that mean? That means what? First of all, I challenge everyone this week. I'm going to give you three challenges. Number one, find out who your local representative is in your area. Okay? First, find out who your congress congressman is in your area. Find out who is the judge, who's the prosecutor. Who's the people that calls it in your local area? That's number one. Then number two, find out who your state representatives are that you can complain to. Okay? Because I'm going to tell you something. Based on what jurisdiction you live in, you're going to find out that you may be a Democrat with a Republican uh, 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 representative. Doesn't matter. Bombard them. Bombard them. Then you find out from a, a, a national perspective. But Rebecca said something that's very key. Start tagging your local legislation and your state legislators in your tags. Start putting hashtag your congressman name. We can put the at sign and put whoever you yes, want on a tweet, on Instagram. You can tag whoever you want on, on a tweet. On Twitter and on Instagram, you can tag whoever you want. Slam them. Yes. Bombard them. Yes. Literally hit them so hard. Yes. Right? And you can even hold... Our, our representatives and our senators accountable. Yes, you can. Because they're too quiet. Mm -hmm. Why are you not on a video? Why are, with, with, we have a voice. Social media gives us a voice. Mm -hmm. Where, why are they so quiet? Where, I don't see you on a video speaking out to say it's time for change. We have got to answer these questions in our country. And you are being paid to make a difference. So we need you to be vocal. Find out who your senators are. Find out. Most of us don't even know who our senators are. Most of us don't even know who these people are. Right? Oh, oh, so and here's another thing. Make sure that I'm about to go find out who the attorney is who's brought the charges against the cop that had his knee on Mr. Floyd. And we need to start tagging him on social media and saying, 
Listen, this is wrong. Third degree? Are you kidding me? Now, you know what I did third degree? I know what I did third degree. Here's what bothers me, and here's where the laws need to change. If you are a police officer or someone of a position in government, you should be held to higher standards than the public. Okay, you should be held to if you're if you're held to protect and serve. Protect and serve means protect and serve us. But if you're abusing that privilege, your penalty should be harsher. Because first of all, you know the law. Second of all, you have taken an oath to uphold the law and to provide just what you said. So if we start reversing it and giving the criminals third degree charges and giving the legislators or the police officers first degree charges or putting their blood down for lethal injection when you kill somebody. And we have the power to do it. Come on. See, we got to change as, this. So the video that recorded Ahmad being killed um, didn't come out for a couple months after he was killed. And as soon as that video went viral and all of a sudden everyone came out and we literally were demanding justice. They were arrested the next week. GBI gets involved. The next week. Yeah. It came out of the local power when GBI started, now it went to the state level yeah, yeah, where they got involved yeah. mm -hmm. and they said, wait a minute. And those, those that father and that son were arrested the next week. Yes. And then they had the cameraman the week after. Why are we going here today? Because here's the shift that's needed and the change that's needed. We need to stop complaining, stop breaking mm -hmm. up, stop breaking up, you know, merchandise and setting cars on fire. That doesn't do anything but shows proof that, oh, they are savages. They are, look at them, they have no taming, they're untamed, they have no, you know, that's the, that's what there's one of these said, okay? And we're going to talk about that in a second as well. But we need today, if you, how can I say this? What I learned in the 80s when I was growing up is this. The one thing that America fears is educated minorities. Because you are not supposed to learn the system. That's right. You are not supposed to learn the laws. You are not supposed to be able to know your rights. Okay? And once education started coming, here's the problem. It doesn't do you any good to learn the system and become part of the system. That's been the problem. We have lawyers who say, if I defend you, I can lose my money because I'm getting a lot of money now. Because in the system, the system is full of money. And the root of love, the love of money is the root of all evil. So people start making these monies. No, we need people that say, I don't care about the money. It's about being right. It's about justice. It's about creating a world that we can turn to our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, so that this crap doesn't continue. Because I'm going to say something to you. Police brutality. And this is, going, this is, this is deep, and I, I want you to hear this. What place can I go to as a white supremacist or a black person who don't like white people? Where can I go and put on a badge, be protected by the law, and still bring about lynching or belief, you know, because lynching is nothing but brutality, in a way, I'll be a police officer. Because they have a code of ethics, they have a code of honor, they protect each other. We must stop and really hold every office accountable. What's, who's the chief of police for your, your, your city? Who's your chief of police? Who's your sheriff? We have to understand our power. Yes. That is what it boils down to. And listen, I hmm. love attorneys like Chris Stewart here in Atlanta, Georgia, who's fighting and getting little civil cases. A lot of these wrongful death suits are actually being settled in civil cases, guys, for millions of dollars where they are winning cases against for the families of, of people who have been murdered and abused in the hands of the law. And listen, we need more of that because that starts to bring that pressure down. You're, you're, listen, if, these, or if, if the country begins to experience so much litigation around these cases, guess what? Money talks. Hmm. Money talks. These small governments and governments that are being sued by, by the, the families of people who are, have been killed, these lawsuits keep coming down the, that where they're being awarded millions of dollars for wrongful death. We have got to use our laws. We've got to use the legal system. And we've got to use social media. Mm -hmm. We've got to use social media. Mm -hmm. The time for just complaining privately are over. If, if we even made up our minds to say, that we're going to do one video a week on our Instagram where we tag 
the legislation where we tag mm -hmm. the people who are responsible for these choices and we are loud enough and enough of us do it, guess what? We begin to put pressure mm -hmm. on the people who are responsible for holding these people accountable. All right. Let's see. Yeah, we're getting close on time. So let's talk about a couple of things real quick, Rebecca. Um, what people don't understand, and I want you to hear this very carefully, there is a new racism that has been happening for the last 10 to 15 years called gentrification. And many people don't think about it from that perspective. Let me go there with you. In Atlanta back in the, when did the Olympics come? 2000? No, 96. In 1996 when the Olympics was coming, when Atlanta won the opportunity to get Olympics here, gentrification kicked in place. Many of you that are from Atlanta remember Tech Woods? Tech Wood is down around Georgia Tech. Tech Wood, the area called Little Vietnam used to be named back in the day. It was full of blacks. It wasn't uh, the most up class. It was a lot of drugs, a lot of homelessness, you know, uh, uh, poorness, and, 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 and poverty. And so Bill Campbell was, was the mayor then. And they began to develop, we got to turn Atlanta into a city that the world will be proud of. We don't want to have all this stuff in place. So watch this. We can't do things by just pushing people out because that's obvious racism. There were laws written that we would redevelop these communities, upscale them. But here's where the racism came in. We would slap a price tag on them that we know you can't afford. And not do this. You gotta, you gotta hear this. And so what that done was push all of the people. I'm gonna take you back to the on history. It pushed them from Tankwood to Riverdale. So all of a sudden now, um, uh, what's that county called? Uh, Riverdale, what's that city county called over there? Uh, Jonesboro, Riverdale, uh, back that time, Conyers, because the mall, the mall in Conyers was not built. Stonecrest Mall wasn't built for whites. It'd be black and built for whites. But when this took place in the 90s, and it, did, it, it took justification, it pushed everything out of Atlanta, they went to places that had lower incomes. What they started to do was develop communities with low income, and they were putting them in one place. We can see it where we live now. If you look across the street, you can see what places are being changed. Clayton County, thank you. And so Gwinnett County, I grew up in, I grew up in, Barrow, in, in Barrow County. Gwinnett County back in that day was not developed. But now Gwinnett County is the richest county in the state of Georgia because guess what? People began to come to Swanee. Now Johns Creek. You know, you have Cobb County. There are certain counties where the laws are written to allow people to prosper while pushing out minorities that can't afford it. We have to wake up and start to see the various ways that things are being done. Because this is stuff that fuels. You can't attack one area, is where I'm going, without attacking it all. Because there's things written in place. And if you go to every major city in this country, gentrification is taking place. And what Jerrica just made a comment, she said, it's awful we as black mothers and fathers, we have to teach our black boys and girls how to interact with police so they can come home safe and alive. My heart broke into a million pieces when I heard him call out for his mom because he knew right then he was going to die. I'm a mom and that hurt my soul. And, and one of the things that I think that we must begin to, to say to our white friends, you guys, is that there, we first of all have to admit that they don't have to have those conversations with their children. They don't have to have those conversations. My father sat down all three of my black sons and when they would come of age and would have a conversation with them about exactly what to do with, whenever they were interacting with the police. And he had to have that conversation with my sons in order to make sure they would come home alive. And, and white people do not have to have that conversation. There is a privilege that comes with being white that you are not afraid of police brutality. You're not afraid that they're going to kill your children just by being stopped, pulled over because they made a, a right-hand turn without putting on their blinker. They're, you're not afraid that your children are going to die at the hands of police. And we are. And it's so important that we begin to have the discussion to say, okay, if you don't see it as, a, as much of a big deal, would you be willing to trade places with how black people are treated in America? If it's really not that big of a deal, would you be willing to be treated the way black people are treated in America? And if it was really not a big deal, you would have no problem trading places with someone black. We have to begin to admit this is an issue. 
And we have to begin to admit that we have got to come together, white, black, brown, anybody who is on the side of justice and fair and equal treatment has be got to begin to have a voice. It's no longer okay to just be quiet. It's no longer okay to just sit back and not do anything and keep saying someone else will do what it takes. Someone else. You've got to begin to use your platform. You've got to begin to use your voice. I was so proud this past week for so many white people that I follow on Instagram that use their platform to speak out use their platform to, to say this is wrong, this is unacceptable. And the more that we actually come together in unity to become one voice and take action, take action, right? We have to understand that this isn't the majority of Americans. No, no. The majority of Americans believe in fair and equal treatment, yes. love everybody. The yes. majority of Americans yes. are not racist, yes. but yes. you're talking about a very vocal minority of racists in the United States, A very, a, a, but they're very vocal and they're very passionate about what they believe in. And we have to become just as vocal and just as passionate in order to begin to make a difference because things have to change, yeah. have to change. And when we look at the riots and we look at everything that's going on, we have to understand that it is that level of frustration. It's not just black people out there rioting. Look at the footage, you guys. It's white, brown, black. Everyone's frustrated and they're hurting. Mm -hmm. They're hurting yes. over these injustices. But it's time for us to come together. It's time for us to take action. It's, it's, I'll even say this, it's no, it's no longer okay for any of us to be quiet. It's no longer, okay, we have got to use the power of social media to bring pressure, to bring about equality, and we have got to use our rights to vote, to put people in office who are, are determined and who are committed to change as well. And we've got to then also hold our, our the people in our lives who are powerful enough that should be running for office, should be running for office, there, there's, we all know people who are capable of bringing about change. We need different types of people to become politicians. Mm -hmm. We need to be raising our kids to become politicians. And, and it's time for us to bring about change from the inside out, from the inside out. Is it gonna take time? Yes, but guess what? Page people, our younger generations have run out of patience. And this is where you see it boiling over into the violence, into the riots that we now have. And, but we have got, okay, fine, that's all happening, but let's make sure we don't forget to do the things that are actually, that are within <coughs> our, our realm. This, this is something that's within our power to do. We can make phone calls, we can email, we can use our social media platforms to be vocal and verbal and, and bring attention, put the spotlight on the injustices and demand justice. And the more that we do that, the more pressure that gets applied to these people who have been voted into offices for them to do the right thing. Yes. So we've got to use our voice and we've got to use our platform. Amen. Amen. But with that being said, we want to make sure that everyone understands the importance of your voice. It, it will be a waste to put out cars that are burning, buildings that are burning, repair the glass, and the products that have been stolen and never really deal with the issue. The issue is, it's time for change. We're at a point of a major shift in our country That's right. that your voice matters. It matters. Okay. Christy just said, it is time. I have, I have loved everyone equally my whole life, but now is the time to stand up as a white person and make changes with my privileges. Yeah, and, and let me say this, and we're gonna, we're gonna pray and raise an offering. Um, if you study history, whites have always They've supported always mm -hmm. uh, the movement. It's just now more of them are speaking because we can see it. But if you yeah. go back with the, in, during the civil rights era, there were many whites that came along and rolled and died just yes. as blacks. Uh, we just know that 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 this is history. So don't think that it's just all of a sudden no. whites started. No, they've no. always been a part of this movement. That's right. Because now the country has become more uh, uh, in culture with different That's nationalities. Right. Now we have Hispanics. We have Asians, right. we have whites, we have black, we're more unified. And that's the one reason why Obama, when he ran for president, his motto was, yes, we can. 
the other nation. That's he right. didn't signify making America great again because in his eye, being unified as one country That's is right. great. So And Brenda and Christy, we thank you so much for your yes, support. Yes. And it's also like you're realizing how much power you guys have. Christy and Brenda, the white privilege that you've been given just by the color of your skin, you have so much power to support this movement. Because, like I said, it's it's one thing for black people to come out and, and be upset and hurt and angry. Of course, this is happening to, to our race. But it's so important that as a human race, we come together to stand against the bullies, come against the evil. The evil, because the, you guys, we have to understand this is evil. Yeah. Evil. It is evil. And, it, and we have to fight. Not It's more than prayer. We can't sit back and just pray anymore. Right. We have got to take the necessary action to say we have a voice. Our voice matters. Our votes matter. And our actions matter. And using this wonderful platform called social media to do that. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we glorify you for this day. We thank you for the message. We thank you for the talk. And Father, I pray that what we've shared and what's been shared with us can resonate throughout the airway, that our uh, voice can begin to matter the most, that we come from an anger, from being angry, and take that anger and put it in a passionate way of change. So this morning, let us take this message, let us do the research and find out who our local legislation is and the legislators are and find out who our state representatives are and even on a national level. And let's use the power that we have, the freedom that we have, God, the voice that we have in unity. Let us not see color, but let, let us see, God, humanity and stand up for humanity. We, we, we know that the spirit of racism runs rampant throughout this country, throughout this world. But, Father, today we ask for a solution. That as the popes speak, as others come together, let us come together with a solution, God how we can take what Dr. Martin Luther King and all of them did back in the civil rights era and merge it with today and take the passion of our youth and come up with an answer that applies for today. For God, there is a gap in the breach. There's a, there's a gap in the bridge, and we got to bridge the gap with the, the knowledge of the old with the power of the new. You said you call the old because they, the young because they're strong, but you call the old because they know the way. And let us come together today, God, in unity, in strength, Bless this message. Bless those that are hearing the word. And let's all be agents of change. This we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Amen. Rebecca, you do the offering, we'll do the camera. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I, you know, I was just sitting here thinking when we we're having this discussion, and I'm gonna commit to do, to making posts on my social media, and I'm going to start tagging these politicians, start tagging the people in power that have the, the, the power to make change. And I'm gonna to begin to use my platform in a way that I haven't before. And, and I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be accountable to using my platform as well. The, listen, I may be an influencer, and, but we all have social media pages and it's time for us to start tagging. It's time for us to start taking responsibility for the changes that are necessary. And I'm going to do that. And, and you need to commit with me to do that, right? that I've used my platform for all kinds of different things, but it's time for us to take this to the next level. I'm not even really big on Twitter, but I know that Twitter is, is, is that platform where you can tag anybody. And it's time for us to start using our power. And so this, this morning, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. We hope this has inspired you and encouraged you to take action, for all of us to come together and take action. And if you feel like this message has helped you in any way, we encourage you to, to donate, to partner with us, support us. You can sow a financial seed, give a love offering. We're going to begin to take action on our local level and national level to bring about change. And it's important that we do this together. No amount is too small. No amount is too big. Thank you so much for all of your support and love. We appreciate you so much. We have invested in more technology and cameras and lights and everything that we're doing to take these broadcasts to the next level. We love you all. Blessings in abundance. The link up is up above in the, in the um, video to give on PayPal or Cash App. On Cash App, it's the Way Life Center, the dollar sign, the Way Life Center. Um, and on PayPal, there's a PayPal link up above for you to make a donation. We love you guys. Blessings in abundance. Have a wonderful week. We're praying for our country. We're praying for you and we love you all.